Welcome back to the Buds in the Box podcast. The Leafs win 7-4 to against the Detroit Red Wings in an absolutely unbelievable uh, 3-1 comeback, or you could say 4-2. Uh, unfortunately, the boys couldn't join us today for the podcast, so it'll just be me, uh, but I'm kind of excited to not get interrupted. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, huge game for the Leafs. I mean, I was watching this game uh, up 3-1, for the Red Wings, and they made a, a great, great comeback. I, I thought it was over at that point. And the Red Wings, they're, they're a good team. They are um, uh, right out of the wild card spot, just behind Boston. Um, 10 points back, actually, so it's not likely that they make the playoffs. But it's still possible for them to make it. Regardless, the Detroit Red Wings are a good team. They've been playing really well recently. Um, Dylan Larkin is playing at an all star level. Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi is playing really well this year. Uh, for the games that he's allowed to go to because he's unvaccinated. Um, and this Toronto team, um, this, this is what we want. We Instead of blowing 3-1 leads, we want to um, get them back. And, you know, obviously it's shitty if, you, if you always come, you're always playing from, like, behind and always losing the lead. But... The, this Leafs team has done it a few times this year, and this that is their identity. We have to reverse what our identity once was because we cannot be blowing 3-1 leads like we did to Colorado Avalanche. But anyway, um, the, I, I mean, great comeback for the Leafs, and um, th- this is this is what we need. Down 4-2 and you end up winning the game 7-4, that's, that's something else. Uh, Peter Mrazek starting tonight um, in the first period. Very slow start for the Leafs. Uh, Mrazek led in a goal one minute and 15 seconds into the game. Dylan Larkin scored, assisted by Vladimir Nemesnikov. Uh, Matthews, not the best defensive play, I'm going to be honest. Um, I think he thought that he could intercept the pass, but he just like looked away for a second. You can see his eyes move in the, um, the replay, and the puck just went right by his stick. Larkin makes a nice move on Brody, and um, kind of a poor defensive play by Brody, I'm not going to lie. So, um, you know, not, not the start you wanted, especially Mrazek. He's playing in his hometown in Detroit. Definitely not the start you wanted. But to my surprise, a weird goal goes in, actually. This one this one was kind of weird. Um, Pierre Engvall scores, um, assisted by Spezza and Riley. I thought, I swear Riley got the primary assist. I didn't know Spezza threw that at the net. Um, but I'm pretty sure Riley just, like, whipped it in. Um, and it just tipped off Pierre Engvall. Um, and then tipped off like um, Nadelkovich's, uh, like the top of his pad, and just went right in. So lucky break for the Leafs to tie the game, and that's exactly what they needed. The th- another thing I noticed in the first period that was like not like a great start. I mean, first of all, if you look at the shots, fifteen to nine in the first period, and the Leafs got demolished the first period. It should not have been one-one. The Red Wings should have been winning that. Austin Matthews was, it was like, this is the first time I've ever seen this. I've watched a lot of Leafs hockey, especially in the past two years. Austin Matthews is one to shoot the puck, and he was like scared to shoot the puck. He was playing like Marner, and we'll get to Marner later because he's been playing unbelievable. But Matthews really looked like he was scared to shoot the puck. And um, it was like a play with him, Bunting, and Kasha, kind of like a three-on-one. And Matthews like had like an open net. It was kind of weird. I guess he saw Nadelkovich coming back a little bit, but he just passed it like backdoor to Kasha, who was like already behind the net at this point or behind the uh, below the goal line. So it was kind of a wasted play, and he could have easily shot that and scored. He did not score tonight, although he had a few chances, um, like he does almost every night. Uh, moving on to the second period, this is where the Leafs kind of lost track. Um, of their identity, they actually outshot the Red Wings, but Nadalkovich, he was playing very good, and Mrazek was start to look shaky here. Um, I di- I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't have full trust in him. Uh, Nemesnikov scores from Sider and Larkin. Nemesnikov has he's been having a great year, to be honest. Uh, let's see how much his stats. Um, almost half point per game basically. Now he's probably at a half a point per game. Uh, very underrated player. I believe he played at Tampa Bay. Mes- Tampa Bay ended up somewhere um and yeah he's he's kind of had a turnaround year um so uh say same with Cider he's been playing unbelievable this year uh great play by him and yeah uh Tyler Bertuzzi scores the next goal Robbie uh 
Fabry and Cider again. Cider again. Wow. Fabry is also playing really good this year. The Detroit has they have a good young core. Uh, Steve Eiserman, he has he has put together a great great team. Speaking of um, Eiserman, I actually have his jersey right here. <laughs> I just noticed that, but yeah, he he has um, a very good team this year, and um, I mean they have they have a good young core. He's made uh, a lot of good. Uh, transactions. Lucas Raymond, um, Maurice Sider, Bertuzzi has been amazing this year. I picked him up in fantasy. He's been going off for me. Um, obviously, Larkin, a uh, great player. Um, Suter, that was a good pickup from from the Blackhawks. I Suter, I always noticed him. I noticed him in the uh, the playing round when Chicago was in the playoffs, and he was going off. Same with Slater Cuckoo, but Slater Cuckoo kind of sucks now. Um, hold on. My app is freezing on me. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the Detroit has a good young core, like I said at the start. And it was really showing in that in that second period. Um, fortunately, though, we had our Lord and Savior, the greasy rat himself, Michael Bunting, step in. And we're, we're going to get to Marner and everyone else later. But Michael Bunting, unbelievable. This guy was on a mission tonight. And the funny thing that I found... So, Michael Bunting has been a great replacement for Zach Hyman this year. Um, he's costed a fraction of the price and is honestly more, like, he's producing more than um, Hyman is this year. Hyman has been on a, a very dry streak lately, hasn't scored an 11 goal, scored two tonight, and got an assist, I believe. I don't, I don't think the game's over, or it probably is. Could have finished with more. I, I didn't really check. But the night that Michael Bunting scores a hat trick, Zach Hyman also gets going and, and gets three points. So I find that that was pretty funny. But in that third period, sorry, in the second period, Michael Bunting, I believe this goal, I, this was the first tip. So um, it was kind of just a shot from the point. Uh, who shot that? Hall shot that. And Michael Bunting had that good tip. And um, Nadelkovic just stood there, like, wants to take it up high. Um, but it ended up going through his legs. They thought it was a high stick, but it was a good goal. And then this is where it looked like it was over. Dylan Larkin, power play goal. It was a great shot. Uh, I still think Peter Mrazek should have had that. It was just a one-timer in the slot. I don't know how no one was covering Dylan Larkin, who was just sitting there in the slot on the on the power play. Um, but he kind of shot it, one T down on his knee, and uh, just kind of to the side of the pad. Again, Mrazek should have had that, but whatever Lucas Raymond with that assist so all like the top six core of the future of Detroit producing in this game but then we go to the third period and the third period is all Leafs five goals for the Leafs in this period mind you two were empty netters but still um great great period this is where the Leafs get their identity this is what we want our identity to be again I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm just going to say this again because the Leafs, they need to get be the team that creates the comebacks and not have the comebacks against them. That is, I mean, that's I think that's all we need. Um, they The Leafs have been shaky the past month, I'd say the past five to ten games. They haven't been the same since since um, the break when they got their little break from for COVID and all that stuff. They also haven't had fans. That might be a factor. Our last video was no excuses, no excuses. The Leafs, they, they called a timeout. There's a timeout somewhere, I think, in the second or third period. Um, it was like I saw it. It was the, the Leafs were using a TV timeout as a regular timeout, um, which I'm surprised coaches don't do that more often because it's basically a free timeout. But uh, I, I heard the commentators, I think it was Craig Simpson and Chris Cuthbert today, they said that, that you know, usually that doesn't happen. Like, usually the coaches just let the players roam free and they just let them, you know, do what they want. But Sheldon Keefe got everyone, and he he used it like a regular timeout, and he <laughs> kind of just reamed them out for two or three minutes there, which I thought found was pretty funny because usually timeout's 30 seconds. But um, it, it seemed to work because something kicked in the Leafs in the third period. Halfway through, uh, 9.30 in, Michael Bunting scores an unbelievable goal. I think this is such an underrated goal. Uh, I, I forget who shot that. It was Marner. Yeah, it was Marner. 
took a shot, and he's been shooting a lot lately. I will get to him after um, Sandine's goal. But uh, Marner shoots it, hits off Bunting, and then Bunting turns around, left shot, bats it out of the air into the empty net. And then the goal right after that to tie the game comes two two and a half minutes later. And uh, just a great pass by Marner again. Or no, it was, sorry, it was, yeah, it was Marner. But Matthews took that shot when he tipped it. Sorry, my bad. Um, so Marner this time gives him a backdoor pass and he puts it into the empty net for his first hat trick. I believe that's his first career hat trick, unless I'm mistaken. Um, another weird stat about that hat trick is today it was hockey night in Canada or hockey day in Canada, sorry, which I, I've never heard of before, but apparently it's a thing. And it was the it was in Scarborough tonight, which is um for those who don't live in toronto it's it's a it's a large city around the the greater toronto area and michael bunting apparently is from scarborough i i i know jude definitely know that and jude have something to say about that but um i didn't know that and he is the first ever player who where they do a hometown hockey to score a hat trick in their hometown of the hometown hockey segment so they did in Scarborough. He's from Scarborough and is the first player to get a hat trick, which I thought was a, a just a weird, kind of an absurd stat. But um, I mean, I'd say that's pretty cool to have. I mean, you're the first player to do something. It's probably going to be a while for it to happen again. So, what can you say? It's a pretty cool stat. No complaints there. And then to take the lead with three minutes left, the Leafs started all were all over the Detroit Red Wings. They just couldn't keep it out of their zone, and Kerfoot puts it in front of the net. Tavares has it um, from outside of the corner, and I I was like, oh, pass it to Willie, pass it to Willie, and he kind of passed it across. I was like, why is he doing that? Willie is right there. Did he miss the pass? But out of nowhere comes Sandine to score his first goal of the season and put it into the empty net. Oh, my God. That was I, – I literally screamed. Because I did not think they were going to come back. And I was so scared that the Leafs were going to let in a goal. But they didn't. And that basically sealed the deal there. There was another chance that the Red Wings had with about two minutes left. Um, someone shot it. I don't remember who. Hit off Brody. And hit off the crossbar. And the Red Wings thought it was in. They had another chance. But the whistle was blown. And Fabry got a penalty. Um, so after that, the Red Wings didn't really have any more chances. Um, and this is where Mitch Marner got his empty netter. Um, nothing to it uh, much. It was just, I, I swear Matthews got the assist for it because he was just playing it with it around. Oh, but then he passed it to Riley. Riley up to Kerfoot. And then Kerfoot gave it to Marner. Marner just puts it in the back of the net. I'm remembering that now. I was I thought I really thought Matthews got that assist. But then um, there's still more drama in this game. I don't know how. But John Tavares scores an empty netter. Um, he's given the puck, the Red Wings pull the goalie, and he has a great chance. He shoots it once, blocked by Bertuzzi. Shoots it again, pad save by Bertuzzi. You're hearing that right, Bertuzzi was the one who did gave the pad save, which is un, like, uh, unheard of. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, but he, I, I, have, I have a lot of respect for him, um, regardless of that whole unvaccinated situation, um, I don't really care about that. And I definitely don't want to get into politics. Um, but I really respect him uh, as a hockey player. He goes out there every night. And I used to be a really big Red Wings fan. Um, and I've, I've gone to a few Red Wings games in Detroit. And I can tell you, um, when Detroit was in their really bad slump, uh, in their rebuilding phase, and they just couldn't do anything, there was two players that were always working their hardest night in night out that was Jonathan Bernier um and it was Tyler Bertuzzi he is he has a lot of heart and I think if any team could have him they would gladly take him on their team um I mean they were they're losing 6-4 they already knew they lost the game there was what like 15 seconds left and he goes out and saves two shots in a meaningless game he didn't have to do that but he put it he put his body on the line for that um, in the end, the Leafs got the last laugh because <laughs> Tavares got the puck again and dumped it in right over his head and it went in and he was, he was pretty pissed. Um, the, the Detroit Red Wings, they're a good team. Um, 
But like I said at the start, I don't think they'll make playoffs. They've had their struggles. But I I mean, the Atlantic is going to be... <laughs> I think once the Boston Bruins start to fa- fall out a little bit, it's going to be Florida, Tampa, Toronto, Detroit. Um, you also have the Ottawa Senators who have a really good core. They could be really good in a few years. They still have Sanderson who's playing the Olympics. We'll see how he does. Uh, I'm curious to see how he turns out. But the Atlantic is very, very strong right now. Leafs get two huge points on the board because they've played less games than everyone. That's why they're so f- far back. Um, but they, I mean, they're still, if they win their next few games, you know, they're going to be tied with Florida. Uh, Florida got the win as well tonight. And I believe Tampa did as well. No, they lost in a shootout. That's still one point for them. Um, and Boston obviously uh, got the win last night against the, the Yotes. McAvoy with the uh, late goal. So it's it's a real tight race for the first spot in the Atlantic because whoever gets that first spot is is um, likely going to make that next round because you know they're going to get the to play the wild card spot and then the te- teams who come in second, third, and whoever gets the wild card spot there most likely Boston, um, but it's any man's game right now. They are um, second and third team. They're going to have a, a lot of trouble. I'm really hoping it's not the Leafs. I, I'm really hoping the Leafs get uh, that, that first spot so we don't have to play Tampa or Florida until the second round because I think we just need to get past that second round. But, um, you know, we'll play whoever we w- will get. And, I mean, it's not an ideal situation, but it's it's our situation, so we're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to overcome those obstacles. I mean, if we if we can't get past Florida in the first round, we're not going to win the Stanley Cup anyway. So regardless, we're gonna have to have some tough matchups. Florida is a really good team. They literally they came back from um, uh, um, I think a three one lead as well tonight against yes against the uh, San Jose Sharks, and I'd say Detroit Red Wings and San Jose Sharks are on the same par. So it's it's looking tough in the Atlantic, but we got to get through it, um, and we'll figure it out. Playoffs time. Really hoping to get down to Maple Leaf Square with the boys. Uh, and that's about it. That's all I have to say. Uh, I meant to keep this video short, but it kind of kind of got, got away from me. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching the Buds in the Box podcast. Uh, hopefully the boys will join me next time. The Leafs play. Uh, thank you guys for um, 1,000 subscribers as well. Forgot to mention that. And uh, make sure you guys go check out our sponsors down below. Use code BUDS20 at manscaped.com and thepeoplescup.ca. We will see you guys next time. This has been the Buds in the Box podcast. Leafs win. Bye for now.